Okay, now there are, there are three, right? There are three newer cephalosporin beta-lactamase inhibiting drugs. There's Vebamir, Evacaz, and Zerbaxa. So why don't you start us off, let's run through these things and just tease them out. When do you use them? What are they good for in gram-negative infections? How do you use them? You're up. So By the way, they all volunteered you. Did they? <laughs> Thank you. So CRE, CRE, Pseudomonas, that's my answer. Oh, thank in that you so order. Much. <laughs> so they're very targeted agents. They're okay. not the catch all. You know, give me the gorilla psyllin that covers everything. Wait, gorilla psyllin? Yeah. I, that, that's new. I like that phrase. So, I like that. Thank you. That, that approaches his brain dead approach to antibiotics, gorilla psyllin? Yeah. So, you know, you have to know where they're best utilized. So even though they have a diverse spectrum of activity, okay. I really see them. In that order, CRE is the targeting of uh, miropenem vaverbactam. That would and, be vabamir. Yeah, okay. and and that's where it's best used. Ceftaz, AV, um, CRE. I mean, those are the agents. The Avacaz, CRE. Right, okay. right. And then um, ceftolazane, tazo, we would target for pseudomonas, and that's kind of where, in a very simplistic bug drug matching, is sort of how I I. Put that. And so Why just, is she laughing? Just to, Cause I, cause I know the comments coming from no, the no, 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 no. So, <laughs> so th that was a good overview and I agree with that overview. I think there's a couple key pieces to know and, and, and one is that, again, these are not, this is not a class. And I think that that's something that's obvious. They, these are three new drugs and I pick one of them and I'm gonna use that for my gross resistant organisms. They each have their particular niches. Um, and, and I agree, and, and just know that there might be your own institution might favor one of these versus one of the other ones. And so understanding how these perform in your local microbiology becomes crucial to making that decision. Right, and they also all have other attributes, mm -hmm. right? Although your paradigm, I think, is straightforward and to the point, you know, meropenem vaberbactam, given the dose of meropenem you're giving and the extended infusion to optimize the pharmacokinetics, picks up a lot of ugly looking pseudomonas that you wouldn't pick up necessarily. It has nothing to do with the beta-lactamase inhibitor, it's all due to the dosing of the carbapenem, but it's optimizing these two concepts. Uh, uh, Ceftolazone tazobactam has some ESBL activity, that's why it's paired with the beta-lactamase inhibitor. It's not the world's super reliable uh, ES, uh, uh, ESBL activity, but it kills some of them. And again, Avicaz, on the other hand, still will pick up some extra pseudomonas you might have missed, mm -hmm. uh, particularly ceftazidine-resistant pseudomonas where the susceptibility is now restored. So there are other pieces to this complex puzzle, but I think all of those attributes are really secondary, and Deb's point is correct about where we really need to be targeting them, because we don't want them abused just because they can do something else. What about safety issues? Are they all safe? I mean, safe is a relative term, right? Wait a minute, I get to say it. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> Do, can I be an ID specialist now? Uh, you're, get, you're getting there. I'm getting there. You are. But what about the safety issues on these drugs? Uh, what do we know about them? So, I mean, I'll, I'll chime in again. We're, we're limited at this point by, you know, clinical trial data. We're, we're, we're limited by sometimes small numbers from the standpoint, but they're beta-lactams. Um, they're beta-lactams. I mean, ceftazidime is the same ceftazidime that you give by itself, um, and you're adding abobactam, and there's no real safety signals that have come up from that standpoint. Meropenem is meropenem, um, and, and ceftolazane to date has been well, at least I can speak to my own experience, has been very well tolerated in patients. And I say that, so when people ask if they have side effects, they behave like cephalosporins. They behave like carbapenems from that standpoint. So, so there's look, a, a confidence that we don't have with colistin, polymyxin B, even aminoglycosides, from, from that standpoint, Correct. so even when you think about the alternatives, then you feel even better about the safety. And you can even see that in some of, to, to Sandy's point, in some of the small retrospective case series that have come out with Cazavi, for example, you see not only improved outcomes, but you also see significantly decreased toxicity when you compare it to the polymyxins, which are, you know, poison. But, right. but in, in that same vein, I think for all of these agents, there is the risk for emergence of resistance on therapy oh, or the yeah, risk for creating emergence. And particularly, as we've seen with Avicaz uh, and the Pittsburgh experience, if you use that drug over and over again in the same patient, you will create in the patient a clone that is causing an infection that is Avicaz resistant. I mean, these are not tools that engineer us out of the entire problem. They still need to be used smartly. Uh, and I think what Brad Spellberg's editorial that went with the Pittsburgh papers uh, kind of describing their experience was quoting from Jaws, yeah, we need a bigger boat. Right? I mean, it's a pretty ugly shark in the water. 
Uh, and so don't think that you know you can use these willy nilly and they're going to solve your problems. You've got to you know the, the principles of stewardship that I know we'll talk about in a minute that my colleagues all live every day and, and really enforce become even that much more important and that much more crucial if you're going to bring one of these drugs into your hospital. So, so to that point, I just want to elaborate or kind of add a couple things onto there. At least you're not disagreeing. This Is time. It, I'm slightly disagreeing. He's so, there. so again, obviously resistance going to dump, and I think you've seen it a lot with ceftazidobactam in the in the published stuff. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact that it has borderline activity to begin with. Some of those MICs to begin with are four or eight, and if I had ceftaz at a four or eight, I'd expect certain things to occur in that scenario. And I think that when actually people are comparing, as Deb said, CRE, CRE, pseudomonas. I think one of the most notable differences between the two new agents is potent. Uh, meropenem, again, meropenem is often active against KPC on its own. And so now you're adding a beta-lactamase inhibitor to that instead of ceftazidime. And, and I think that that thought process should go into your cho choice between the two because they've actually done some data that suggests because they pharmacodynamically optimize meropenem, because they give six grams of a beta-lactamase inhibitor, that it seems to have less of a, a propensity to have that situation occur.